Praise the Lord. We're working on our prayer series. Today I want to go into, on a positive note, talk about persistence or perseverance in prayer. One of the things, first of all, we have to know is that God cannot fail. He's never failed. And he's never, that song says, he's never lost a battle. And I know he never will. So as long as we stay plugged into him, we won't lose the battle. Because the father gave Jesus a name that is above every name. And so we have a delegated power of attorney to use the name of Jesus. God can not fail. In 1 Kings 8, 56, I'm going to give a couple of scriptures before I go into the actual message. 1 Kings 8, 56, blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised there hath not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant so we can always remind God even of this promise we can take this scripture and remind God that you are a God that cannot fail. That's why I'm putting my trust and my hope. I have nowhere else to go, God. So that's why I'm staying here and being anchored in you and putting my hope and my trust in you because I have been betrayed by humanity before. I've been betrayed by human beings, so my trust can't be in nobody but you. That doesn't mean we have to walk around mistrusting everybody now. (laughs) But our ultimate trust is in the Lord because he holds all power in his hands. Deuteronomy 31.6, be strong. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. That's, we did a sermon on fear being a block to reaching God because we're caught up in fear rather than in faith. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee he will not fail thee so look at there he goes with us and he will not fail us nor forsake us or leave us we're the ones that leave we're the ones that fail we're the ones that turn from god there's been in many of them Turn from God. So that is why it is a walk of humility. We don't know what this life is going to bring. We don't know the storms that we're going to have in this life. We don't know the challenges that we're going to face ever in this life. That's why it's so important to have faith in God. Faith in his word. Stand on his word. No matter what the feeling is. No matter what the thought is. Stand on his word. And pretty soon your spirit man will be rising up to the occasion. It will be rising up to meet that storm. That storm that's coming. Your spirit man has the goods So your spirit man is going to rise up and take dominion 
over that fear, that wavering. You see, human beings can waver in faith. We can be strong in faith one day and in one season and weak in faith in another season. We can waver in our faith, but God doesn't want us to waver. He wants a steadfast relationship with him, a persistent, a persevering relationship with him where we keep on seeking him, keep on praying even though we're looking at a big, huge storm. That's why the disciples woke Jesus up in the boat. Jesus was down in the boat sleeping. And the disciples were like, save us, Lord, we perish. We perish. Look at this storm. We don't know what to do, God. So God, Jesus came up and said, peace, be still. He gave them, a, he showed an example that he had all power over everything. He had power over the storm. He had power over demons. He had power over the dead when he walked on this earth. And Jesus has given us the authority, just like he gave the 12, just like he gave the 70, to use his name. Persistence is a firm or stubborn continuation in the course of action despite difficulty or opposition. How many listening to this are stubborn? No matter what, you're going to stick to your guns. But why not be stubborn for the Lord? Why not say, God, no matter what, I'm not going to let you go. Like Jacob, when he wrestled with God, he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. That's how we got to stay with God. We should pray with patience and perseverance. And that word perseverance is the same as persistence, but it's determination, it's dedication and devotion. Some of us, before we came to the Lord, we had raw determination. We weren't going to let anything get us down. We were going to reach the goal that we set our minds to. And Paul said, we got to run the race to the finish. We've got to make it to the finish line. We just can't take for granted of all the ways that God had. We've seen God move and we've seen God work in our lives and in the lives of others. We just can't take it all for granted and just throw it all away by not sticking, holding on to God, holding on to his garments and not let him go no matter what the devil is showing. He's flashing up before us no matter what he's doing to try to laugh up his sleeve when we feel like we are crushed and weak and can't go on anymore he's boasting i got them i got them there's no way they're going to get out of this one that's how evil and hateful he is psalm 40 verse 1 i waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry we've got to be persistent and wait patiently just because God doesn't answer us right away we still got to wait patiently he doesn't answer us in the time frame that we thought that he should be answering us Yes, we are in human flesh, 
And that's what human beings do. But God is trying to teach us patience. He's trying to teach us perseverance. He's trying to teach us persistence. So we can be built up in our faith and start trusting God. Psalm 88 1. O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. I know some listening to this have cried to God day and night. God, you see this? You see this mess? What are you going to do about it, God? I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been doing everything that I know to do, God. But I still don't see you moving, God. I'm getting discouraged, God. We have all become discouraged because of prayer. But God wants us to know that we will receive answers to our prayers if we don't give up. That's what persistence is about. Not giving up. Building yourself on your most holy faith. Through the word of God, through prayer, that prayer relationship, that's what the devil wants to steal. He wants to steal your communication with God. He doesn't want you to contact God. He wants you to rely on yourself. He wants you to rely on your own know-how. And that way he can work more supernaturally to do his evil. Because if he gets you out of the game, if you are a threat to his strategies, he's trying to get you out of the game. Because he wants to do his work unhindered. Amen. So in a recent sermon, we spoke on the persistent widow. And Luke chapter 18, if you will turn there, since we're talking about persistence in prayer, I wanted to bring this, this parable back up to you. I think it pairs very well with the subject of persistence in prayer. Luke 18 verses 1 through 8, and he spake. A parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Verse 2 saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me, my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. Verse 6, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Jesus said in the very beginning of this parable, we should not faint. We know that word to mean a loss of consciousness. But faint also means weak, exhausted, 
and discouraged. So he started off this parable saying, don't faint. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. This judge was a, a man that did not fear God or care about people. And here is this helpless little widow coming seeking justice. And in that time, women didn't have many rights, especially a little helpless widow woman came to this ruthless judge that said no to her request for justice. He kept denying her request. Why? Because verse 2 said, he feared not God nor regarded man. So he had no compassion. He had no love in his heart at all. But the woman kept bugging the judge, kept bugging, kept nagging the judge. And he only granted her request so that she would stop annoying him. But verse 6, Jesus says, to hear what the unjust judge saith. The judge gave the widow what she wanted just to keep her quiet. But Jesus was showing a contrast in the heart of the judge and in the heart of God. Jesus wants us to see that the judge is the exact opposite of God. God wants us to hang in there and be persistent in prayer. He wants to answer our prayers, but he, it's his will that he wants to get done in the whole scheme of things. So it does not have a time stamp on it like human beings put time stamps on things. We must learn how to wait on God and be courageous and build up our faith and stay in the faith. Don't get tempted to be discouraged. Don't get tempted to be pulled away through depression through suicide, death wishes. That's all the devil's work. He'll try to point it to us, the devil. He'll, he'll whisper in your ear and make you think it's you. He'll make you think is you're the problem. You're why it's like this. And once we get wrapped up in that game, we're just... Easy bait, easy target for his schemes and his lies. God will not respond to us because he is tired of hearing us or that he is tired of us coming before the throne of grace. God is not that mean old judge. Remember that he cares. That judge didn't care. But God's trying to say, if that judge who didn't care would answer that woman when she was persistent, how much more is God going to answer us if we persist, if we not give up? It's not because... He's tired of us coming to him or he's going to answer us so we'll go away because he wants to have that relationship with us. He loves us. He invites us to come before his throne because he wants to answer our prayers. In Hebrews 4.16, he says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need if we get discouraged we're not going to come boldly we may not even go to the throne of grace because we feel like 
What's the use? Prayer doesn't work. God's not hearing me. So why should I even go to the throne of grace? That's the lie that the devil wants you to believe. So he can keep you in bondage. So he can keep you doubting God. So he can gradually cause you to fall away from God. To go back into your old ways and the old things you used to do. Some have fallen back into those old ways and old things. And they can't get back to God. They feel the devil's lied to them and told them they can't. You can't get back to God. You've done too much. But that's a lie from the pit of hell, too. Because that's why Jesus Christ died. So that we don't have to perform works like they did in the Old Testament. So that we don't have to work for grace. No amount of work, no matter how good we are in our own selves, is the grace of God. It is the grace of God. We may feel like God doesn't care, but God is good. Even though we sometimes can't say He's good out of our mouths. We don't feel like he's good. Especially if we're going through hard and rough times. We can be standing. There's a song. And there's a slogan that goes around on Christians. God is good all the time. We can be saying that with our mouths. But in our hearts we don't believe it. God, you're not good right now. But the Bible says God is good. And that is his nature. It doesn't matter how we feel. We can't change the goodness of God based on how we feel. God is forever unchanging. We may feel like the psalmist did in Psalm 6.3. The psalmist said, my soul is also sore vexed. That's, that word vexed means annoyed, irritated, and angry. But thou, O oh Lord, how long? How long, God? You see, that's a human feeling there. We've sometimes felt that way throughout our Christian walk. God, my soul is vexed. I'm tired. I'm angry. I'm irritated with you right now. Get mad at God. But after you're mad at him, make sure you repent and go back to God and say, God, I'm sorry. Annoyed. Irritated and angry. How many listening to this been through that? Psalm 69 3. This is another way some of us may have felt. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. You see what that human being said. He said, my eyes fail. You see, that's the opposite of God. God cannot fail. We can fail God. But him in his love and compassionate heart, and he cares for us. He's waiting for us to come into his arms. But some choose to turn and go back the other way, away from God. Some have felt the goodness of God in their lives. Some have felt the touch of God in their lives. But they've looked at God with his arms open wide to come back. And they've turned the other way and gone back into their ways and their life. 
That's the devil's job. That's what he's there to do. To make you turn from God. He doesn't have to make somebody that has never been with God turn from God because they don't know what they're missing. The Bible says they're in darkness until the light of the glorious gospel shine unto them. They don't know what the light is, but to have experienced the light and turn back into darkness, how great that darkness is going to be. I have to believe that compassion of God will still reach, reach for you. As long as you have your breath, God is reaching for you. No matter what you've done, God is reaching for you. That was the cross of Calvary. The cross of Calvary did it. But sometimes we feel that we don't have the goodness of God. We don't feel that God's goodness is on us. We don't feel that God is good. But our feelings cannot change God. The Bible says God is good in Psalms 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations get those scriptures into your spirit so your spirit man can feed on them so those scriptures can take root in your spirit man because there will be some circumstances there will be some painful times because Jesus said in this world you will have tribulations. You will have tribulations but be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the world. God is still good in those painful times. He still loves us in those painful times even though we may not be able to physically feel but we have always heard the teaching and practiced it in our lives at times, some of us, to go when those, those feelings of pain, those feelings of discouragement come on us. We go to the Lord in praise and bask in praise and let the warfare alone. Get in a different mode with God. And receive his love and affection as you bask in praise. Because your spirit man needs rest in the Lord. We're still in this human body. Jesus couldn't do as much. He left. He was present everywhere. All knowing and all powerful, he left eternity to come to this world. But he himself, Jesus, was acquainted with everything that we go through. He sees every tear. The Bible says he cried. There's a scripture in the Bible that says Jesus wept. He experienced betrayal. He experienced pain and suffering in his human body. So he's acquainted with what we go through. Hebrews, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin so when we hear that word tempted we automatically think of 
things like drugs, sex, what have you. But you can be tempted to be discouraged. You can be tempted to fear. That's what the devil's game is. And Jesus had to overcome the temptations of the devil to do what? To get to the cross. And because he overcame, we can overcome. He became flesh and blood like you. And he knows how to comfort and strengthen you. He experienced our weaknesses and temptations in that same uh, Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 18 for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that that scripture right there is showing the humanity of Jesus Christ. He was a human being. He bled blood like human beings do. But the mystery of it was and is that he was also a hundred percent God. Don't let it blow your mind now because it will. He also himself took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. So that word succor means just simply to help or to comfort us. He was tempted and suffered just like we do. Just think of the anguish. And the Bible shows, I'm not going to go there today, but the Bible shows in the garden of Gethsemane, it shows that Jesus Christ was in that garden in one account of, I think it's three accounts that shows it in the Bible. But in one of those accounts, it shows that Jesus Christ, if you read those scriptures, he prayed for three hours about the same thing. And that same thing was to let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your. Jesus was persistent in his prayer. But. He had asked the disciples, can you watch and pray? So he, he told them, watch and pray. Then he went and prayed. He came back. They couldn't even watch and pray. Why? The Bible says they were sleeping. Every time he went back to them, they were sleeping. It takes not only physical strength to pray it takes spiritual strength mostly to pray and plus it takes faith to pray but those disciples could not watch and pray Jesus had taught them to pray they asked Jesus to teach him to pray. But when it was time to pray. The warfare was too heavy for them. It was too heavy. It was too much. And if anybody wants to do a work for God. It's not that you walk around. Looking for the warfare to come. It's not that you're. Reminding everybody about how powerful the devil is. It's just an enemy that we have to contend with. 
if Jesus had to contend with him, y'all heard me preach this so much because it makes such an impression on me and it is our walk. He was driven of the spirit to be tempted. He had to be tempted. He had to overcome the devil to reach the will of the father. If he had been defeated in the wilderness, we would have nothing to preach about today. He had to pass all the tests, even when the devil showed him everything that he would give him, all the kingdoms of this world. Jesus had to pass the test. But he did it by the power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit drove him into the wilderness, but he didn't drive him in the wilderness and say, get in there, you're on your own. He was under the power of the Holy Spirit. Going back to Luke 18 a minute. Back in Luke 18, verse 7. And shall not God avenge? That word avenge just simply means give justice to his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them i tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth again that non-caring old judge could respond to the widow he just if he could respond to that widow how much more will God respond to his elect? Jesus chose us to be his elect and he hears us when we pray. He doesn't want us to give up. Keep praying and believing until you get the answer. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. Do what you can do. Go on a fast. Seek God in ways that you know how to seek him. Jesus ended that passage by saying, nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. And as I said, it takes faith to persist in prayer. It takes faith to wait for God, faith to believe his word, that he answers prayer, unwavering faith, steady faith. That's where we want to get. That's where we want to be. That's where we want to stay. Even when God doesn't answer as quickly as we thought he should, we may say, God, it's been long enough. You should have responded by now. We actually put an expiration dates on our prayer requests. But that's not persisting in prayer. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. If we're persisting, we're continually asking. We're continually seeking God. We're continually knocking. When we stop, that means our faith 
can get cold. Especially if we get cold on God and stop seeking God because we feel that he's not answering us. People often give up after a few half-hearted efforts and say, God is not answering. God does not care. But unless you have faith and focus and follow through, you may not see what you want to see with God. As a Christian, we must continue to focus on the reason that we are Christians. Focus on why we're following Jesus. Continue to ask him for more knowledge, more patience, more wisdom, more love, more understanding. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking persistence standing strong in the faith going bold unashamed bold persistence yeah God I'm coming to you again because you are the only one that has answers to my prayers you're the only one that can solve my problems. I have a poem. From an unknown author. It says God answers prayers. Sometimes. When hearts are weak. He gives the very gifts. Believers seek. But often. Often. Faith must learn a deeper rest and trust God's silence when he does not speak. For he whose name is love will send the best. Stars may burn out, nor mountain walls endure. But God is faithful. His promises are sure. He is our strength so we must remember that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and for those that are called according to his purpose while you're waiting God is working all things for your good keep praying the Bible says pray continually. It says pray continually in Colossians 4.2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. You know one way you can pray continually is when you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Your spirit man learns how to pray when you can't think of anything to pray. Through your daily task and all of a sudden you, your spirit man will just start praying in the spirit. That is one of the most powerful Ways to pray. I've learned throughout my Christian walk. That the prayer in the spirit. Is very very powerful. Yes the devil has a counterfeit for it. But some of us listening to this today. God. Gave you that. Prayer in the spirit. But like everything else in the spirit realm, it starts with just a seed. And when that seed is planted, it has to get watered. 
And that's how God grows your spirit man. In other words, every bit of word that you get a hold to, ask God to let you see what he's saying spiritually through his word. Not just we read parables, yes, but God was speaking a message in those parables. No, we're not super spiritual. We're not above everybody else. We're just trying to have a relationship with God. And bring others along into the kingdom. But your prayer life is essential. Your prayer life is important. That part of you that communicates with God is important. It's important to your spirit man. Otherwise, we can just be going through the motions of Christianity. Come to church. Say our prayers, go home, live life. But when that storm comes, your spirit man's got to be ready. There may be some new storms that you have never experienced in your life that knock you back. But God wants us to stand up in his power and overcome because that's how your spirit man grows that's how your spirit man gets seasoned yes the prayer in the spirit is a real thing because your spirit man prayeth but your understanding is not fruitful but God knows what you're praying and the bible says your spirit man is edified in jude building yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost in the book of jude so we have tools that we can use but if we don't use them, it's not God's fault. It's not anybody's fault. Sometimes we have to point the finger back to us. And realize what God is trying to do in our lives. Because God is trying to grow us in our faith. He doesn't want us to stay the same. He wants us to grow us. So we can be used more by him. May God bless you as you endeavor to grow in faith in the Lord. May he bless your prayer lives and explode your prayer lives that you see more answers more quickly. As we stand together as a ministry, we can believe God. We can find strength in one another. As well as in God. There's strength that we can find. As we learn to trust each other and to trust God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your strength, God. We pray for your strength to stand and persevere through the rough storms and the rough waves, God, to beat upon us and upon our families, upon who those we're praying for. We pray in the name of Jesus as we say, peace be still, all demonic activity in the spirit realm. We bind your power and your rule and your authority to cause chaos and destruction in our lives and in the life of our families, the people we're praying for. We stand in agreement for them, Lord, and for ourselves in the name of Jesus that we will make it to the finish line. We will run this race and run it 
with the Lord Jesus Christ and with his body. Lord, help us to not get isolated and think we have to fight the battles ourselves, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we could always walk into a walk in a spirit of humility, O oh Father, to know that we can trust one another and all but trust you ultimately, God. We praise you in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against us or our family shall prosper. No attack shall prosper. No strategy shall prosper in the name of Jesus. And Father, let us believe the word of God and not what our physical eyes see, but let our, the eyes of the spirit see you as victorious over all the power of the world, the flesh, and the devil. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.